Jarvis, drop my needle. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're going to review, yes, I have a physical copy of it, Venom Lethal Protector number one. I got the Bill Sienkiewicz variant. Uh, this was the only one I think they had left when I went to the comic store. I don't really go to the comic store that often anymore. Um, I think I've only been maybe two times um, in the past uh, three and a half months. And so when I went in and I saw this there, I was like, okay, cool. I, you know, I'll pick it up because a lot of you guys on my last live stream were telling me that it's good 90s fun and I think I even mentioned a while back when I heard David Michelini was going to write it that I might at least give it one issue uh, you know give it a chance and review it and then see if I continue to read it after that but if I go forward it'll probably just be buying it digitally um, but I just thought okay I, I, I'm holding the physical one in my hand it's still on the shelf might as well buy it and give it a shot so uh, thank you guys for recommending it uh, because I know I don't really review a lot of the the current you know, uh, Marvel Venom symbiote stuff right now. I'm certainly not reading the Venom series, and I had a chance to pick up the Carnage ones also along with this, and I decided not to. I said, yeah, you know what? I'm not not interested in, in Carnage or seeing really what they're doing with him. Um, but at some point down the road when they, you know, put it in a trade paperback, maybe if I get it at a discount on Comixology, uh, I'll check it out then at that point. But for now, I just, I don't have a ton of interest. And one of the only other symbiote games in town right now is uh, if you're reading Devil's Reign, there's a lot of stuff with agony in there, but she's really just a grunt, you know, uh, which is weird because she was kind of like the co-brains of some of Carnage's operation during uh, Extreme Carnage. And now she's just, you know, a random character that fights Spider-Man for a few panels in the new Devil's Reign book. So, yeah, they're not really doing too much with her, but she's kind of part of that Thunderbolts team for whatever reason. Because <laughs> I thought she was still going to go be part of Carnage's big plan. And then I guess they, you know, pulled her away and put her in Thunderbolts. So... If you want some more symbiote action outside of Venom uh, and Carnage, you can get some Agony stuff in Devil's Reign and some of the miniseries that tie into that. Um, but there's not a lot to say about that, so I'm not going to do a video on her because she's literally just like a, a grunt and hired muscle in most of the, the panels that she's in. But this, though, a lot of you are right. Eddie's Mullet and a bunch of you were telling me that this is just some good 90s fun. And it is. You know, David Michelini is from that generation of writing, and so it makes sense that he gets to... The fact that he gets to revisit that era, he would bring that kind of energy to it because that's like what Peter David does when he does those symbiote Spider-Man books. He's kind of going back to the 80s and kind of having fun with uh, some of the you know events that happen in that timeline and, and everything. And that's what's happening here. So this is fun. I, I don't know if I'll do a, like a scene by scene breakdown of this, but I will just say overall, I did actually really enjoy this. It was kind of cool to see these chuckleheads at the beginning of the book, which are these like three Spider-Man villains that Taskmaster hired in the in the mid 90s i think it was right before maximum carnage these three guys showed up in amazing spider-man like 360 something 367 or 368 somewhere around there uh, during like a red skull storyline where they were setting up uh, peter parker's parents maybe still being alive and so they were it was during that whole storyline leading up to maximum carnage and uh, so you have like this guy that blood spider and i think there was like uh, the jagged bow and or jagged bows down here and this is death shield so they're kind of like Avenger kind of knockoff characters, like a Hawkeye knockoff, a Captain America knockoff, and a Spider-Man knockoff, which is weird that Taskmaster would hire these guys because he can kind of do all that stuff too. But, uh, but I think they were just meant to be a distraction. So they actually appeared. So that's what made me kind of wonder when the timeline of this is because it's, it's a little all over the place in some regards, like in a in nitpicky way. So I'll explain in a minute. Um, but just seeing these guys again and seeing them get their, you know, heads caved in literally for one of them um, by Venom is a lot of fun. Uh, Venom actually kills the Jagged Bow uh, by just crushing him between two cars. Uh, and the other two kind of limp away, you know, they get away. And meanwhile, this gets the attention of a, an older uh, villain from the Marvel Universe called Humbug. And he's like, all right, it's time to bring Humbug back. You know, I think I can make a statement here. And I think working with a team, you know, I've always done solo stuff. Maybe if I work with a team, um, I can actually do something. And so he sees the kind of the aftermath of this battle online or on, on the news. And he's like, okay, Jagged Bow is dead. Those other two guys are going to need a third teammate now. Maybe I can be the third teammate. And this is a guy, uh, Humbug, For if you don't know, he kind of just like talks to cockroaches and insects. So that's kind of his gimmick and shtick. So, uh, so meanwhile, while he's like gearing up his big plan to join a team of supervillains uh, of like really lame supervillains, 
Venom is uh, adjusting. Eddie and the suit are adjusting to each other. So Eddie's still saying I sometimes when he's talking about his life and he's uh, kind of going through the flashbacks of his life and kind of breaking down the stuff that's happened up until this point. So why I find that interesting and you know meanwhile he's like stopping a guy who's trying to steal a purse from an old lady in the park and kind of doing that whole like pat on the head thing you know he's it's kind of that kind of humor um but while that's you know while while I was thinking about that like that setup I'm like okay so does this take place before Amazing Spider-Man 300 because he's talking about you know a little bit about getting revenge on Peter and and how he you know it doesn't like Spider-Man obviously but yet people know who he is they know he's Venom and then these characters, they didn't show up till 60 something issues after Venom first appeared. And one of them is now dead. So clearly this can't take place before that either. So I'm just kind of like, oh man, it's that comic book timeline thing. Because you know, he's literally reading a newspaper. Uh, one of the guys, the Death, a Death Shield, is reading a newspaper that says Faker Fired. So it's the Daily Bugle running a story about Eddie Brock being fired from his job. And so you're kind of like, okay, well, if it's in the paper, then either it's like a one year anniversary of him being fired and they're like, you know, oh man, remember a year ago when this happened or, or it just happened. And since you can't really get any more details from that Daily Bugle article, you don't really know when. So I'm like, okay, so he did he just get fired? And now he's meeting these guys before Spider-Man does, in which case he kills one. So does is this not the, you know, like, is this not the, the jagged bow that Spider-Man meets later? Like, does this guy, is he dead? And then someone else takes on that mantle later on when Taskmaster hires him. But then they also mention Taskmaster in this. Uh, so, and it's funny because David Nicolini wrote that storyline uh, in the, in the nineties that had these characters in it. So it's kind of fun that he got to revisit those characters that he kind of, I think, co-created. But at the same time, it's like, I'm like, as a nitpicky editor, I'm like, when does this take place in the timeline? Like, uh, you know, cause why would a newspaper run an article about Eddie just being fired or recently being fired? Um, if these characters are around, one of which who is, dies in this issue right in the beginning, but still appears like 60 issues later after Eddie and Spider-Man fight. So I don't know. It, it's just one of those where you kind of just do, you do one of these, uh, you kind of, you kind of laugh and, and hold your head and just go, eh, I guess it doesn't really matter. And who knows, maybe there's an answer for it. So if one of you guys knows uh, an answer for the timeline of this, you know, let me know. But clearly this is the early days of Eddie and Venom, because like I said, he's still figuring out about the suit. He's talking to it, but it's not really talking back to him. He's asking, you know, where, what, what it was like on its home planet. If it had a girlfriend, a boyfriend or you know, whatever, like a, a significant other, um, a, you know, a pet of some kind and the suit's not really responding. So this is still in those very early days where they're just feeding off each other's hatred and anger towards Spider-Man, but they're not fully, you know, getting to know each other or the symbiote's hiding a few things from Eddie. So um, maybe it's because it, it just got hurt by Peter. So it's, it's kind of standoffish about sharing information. We also get to see Annie in this book, which is cool. Uh, you know, it's always fun to see Anne. This is obviously before her passing, before her death in the comics. And it looks like there's a little twist and wrinkle that they put in here and the continuity that we didn't know before that Anne actually did move on after her and Eddie split up. And, and so you're, again, I'm kind of the timeline. I'm like, all right, so how, when does this, I'm going to guess this takes place like a couple years after, you know, Venom first meets Spider-Man. And then the article in the Daily Bugle is just like a retrospective of a time when, you know, they're just saying, hey, on this date a couple years ago, Eddie Brock got fired for lying and let this be a reminder to journalists out there not to, you know, lie with your stories or check your sources or whatever. So I'm, sh I'm sure there's a, you know, this makes sense in someone's head. <laughs> but in mine, I just started, you know, uh, the branches started breaking off of the tree and I'm like, what, wait, where is this going? Um, but we get to find out Annie has moved on from Eddie uh, enough to the point where her she is in a new relationship and it's moving forward. And unfortunately, this guy is not as cool as Dan is from the movies. Um, but uh, yeah, he's kind of a douchey looking dude. <laughs> so so obviously that relationship, as far as we know, may not work out. But, you know, we'll see how this goes in this miniseries. Um, but yeah, there's just some cool stuff where and the art, by the way, is amazing. Like David Michelini is obviously the writer of this, but uh, Ivan Ferrelli, he's uh, the artist on it. And the art is just, it's just beautiful. Like I just, I love the artwork a lot. Like it's very, very, very cool. It just looks great. Venom looks amazing in every panel. Um, and Eddie looks fantastic. He's like lifting weights, living in the sewers, protecting people. Um, it's kind of fun. So this is, 
before he goes to San Francisco, before he makes a deal with Spider-Man, um, but still in the time period between, you know, meeting Spider-Man and I guess issue 375. So this is kind of definitely somewhere in that in that period for sure. Um, and then also in the background, they're building up um, another villain. So Humbug is doing his thing and he's preparing to fight Venom to prove himself to these other two lame supervillains. And then you also have Carlton Drake, who is running the Life Foundation, working with a Dr. Harwood about a, you know, on a new project that would help him control Venom. And so this is showing his early interest in Venom. And obviously Carlton Drake and his setup is, it should be out in San Francisco. Um, but, uh, but I think he's working with Dr. Harwood who might be in New York. So yeah, just, you know, setting those pieces up, but also since this is called Lethal Protector and Lethal Protector had the Life Foundation in it, it makes sense that David Michelini would put them in here too. Not to mention in Spider-Man like 396 or 397 or 398, one of those issues around the time Venom first appeared, or 297, 298, somewhere in that area, uh, right before Venom first appeared. That was also the first appearance of the Life Foundation. So uh, those two characters have always kind of been in the, the wheelhouse of each other. And so it's nice to see Michelini include Carlton Drake here, because as we know later on, he'll turn into a giant spider monster and, and die. Uh, but this is uh, this is kind of cool to see him in human form being, you know, a, a manipulative, uh, awful human being who runs a company who just wants what he wants. Um, that's kind of neat to see that form of him again, because we didn't get a lot of Carlton Drake stories um, when he was alive. And so it's cool to do this flashback story and get a little bit more of him in it. So yeah, I, all in all, this was just a lot of fun. And during uh, this parade downtown, um, you get Humbug attacking Venom and he mimics the, the, the vibrational scream of a certain kind of insect, uh, some kind of fly, and it hurts Venom and it actually separates a symbiote from him. Um, and uh, there's this, and even the artwork is a lot of fun because like Eddie, when he falls to the ground, his flip-flop comes off. <laughs> And, uh, and then later on when he's in the alley, you know, cr you know, crying and holding the symbiote thinking it's going to die, he's got one flip flop is not there on his foot anymore. It's still on the ground back here. Um, but then, you know, so when he's in the alley, he's like holding the suit and he's missing a flip flop. And I just like little creative choices like that. It just uh, adds a little humor in a way to, to the moment um, and kind of keeps it uh, a little tongue in cheeky, uh, you know, to an extent. So, um, so yeah, I like that. And then the villains, the lame villains, uh, Death Shield and Blood Spider, they're trying to lay low, but then they find out the humbug dude actually beat Venom in a fight. And so they're like, oh, maybe we can use him. And since he's kind of a dumb nerdy guy, maybe we can use him to pull off a couple heists and then, you know, kill him and just take his cut or whatever. And then, you know, get out of town. Um, so they have their own storyline going on and building up. Venom is now holding a, a weekend symbiote. So we have that at the end of this issue. And then we have Carlton Drake uh, talking to Dr. Harwood and her project is completed and she has a way she thinks or believes that will give, you know, Carlton Drake full control over the Venom symbiote. So that's where issue one leads off and I, I liked it. I thought it was a lot of fun and you guys were right about this. So I'm definitely going to keep reading it and, and bringing you reviews of this series at least. Uh, you know, I may be skipping the, the monthly Venom book and the Carnage book and all that stuff. But for this, I definitely will, you know, talk about every month. I'll just probably buy them in digital from now on. Um, so that way I can show some of the, you know, art, the images more clearly up on screen um, from time to time, you know, without overdoing it, hopefully. But yeah, this was this was great. And I appreciate the recommendation and I, I appreciate you guys pushing me to check it out. And like I said, when I saw it in the store, I went in to buy a comic and there just wasn't really anything else to get. I was going to get Ghost Rider number two. That's why I went in there. And, uh, and when I saw this, I said, yeah, okay, let's just spend a few extra bucks and I'll get Ghost Rider number two and I'll get Venom and that way I'll have a Venom vlog finally. So thanks for waiting and being patient on, on uh, more episodes. I will have a Morbius review at some point. I just, I haven't been able to see it. I've been on bed rest um, and I've been working the last like five days in a row and I'm not feeling too well. I'm about to go do a live stream on Instagram and I need like rest and I have work tomorrow. So uh, I haven't been able to see Morbius yet, but I'll try to squeeze it in someday this week. Um, I think I have a couple days off this week or next week I might even have Easter off. So um, at one of those times I will see Morbius and I will review it and share it with you guys uh, for sure. And then we'll have more Symbiote Spider-Man and some other stuff coming up after that. Uh, so yeah, I'm sorry, things keep falling apart. Um, I just took a lot of people's advice when they said, hey man, don't be like some other YouTubers. If you're having like a, a mental struggle with things, just take time away and, and get back to being you. 
And I'm so glad I listened to that advice because uh, I, I, you know, coming on here and sharing all the negative stuff, that's not what this channel's ever been about. And that's not what I wanted to make this channel about. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm glad I heard and listened to you and, uh, and, and the people who wrote me and, and genuinely care. It, it means a lot. It really does. And so I'll try to keep that fun content coming back to you very, very soon. So let me know what you think of Lethal Protector number one down in the comments below. And as always, we'll continue the conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.